I've been working on a massive art project for years now. It all started with the Dave Greco style study that we did back at the end of 2020 and I did not anticipate that this would turn into a massive 24 part painting series. I am of course talking about the Dark and Light Zodiac series which I am so excited to tell you that we can finally, after this video, start working on the final piece of the series. That's right friends, in today's video we are going to finish up the Aquarius painting. However, in today's video, I actually want to talk to you a little more about the meta aspect of doing a big ambitious project like this. We'll talk about how it has improved my art and also how it's impacted my art career to work on something so massive that has taken the better part of four entire years of my life. Hopefully by the end of this video I can convince you to start a big ambitious project of your own and if I do then please do comment below and let me know what your dream project to work on would be. As always if you enjoyed this video and learned something today please remember to give it a big thumbs up and make sure you hit that subscribe button because next week is style study week and you do not want to miss it. Come say hello on Instagram, Discord and Cara, links are down in the description below and that's about everything so without much further ado let's dive into why you should attempt doing a massive ambitious art project and all the wonders that can do for you. I wanted to get the biggest and most obvious one out of the way early doors. The most important thing a big project will teach you is accountability. A lot of artists, myself included, tend to struggle with staying accountable, even when it comes to the smaller one-off paintings. Look at all the WIPs you've abandoned. How many of them are there simply because you lost the inspiration for it? Now, I've said this before on this channel and I'll say it a million times, but inspiration is not supposed to carry you through the entirety of an art project. I feel like this is a romanticized myth that comes from all these movies and sometimes from those fancy artist TikToks where you see people be all inspired and passionate through the entire painting process. Uh, yeah, no, that's not how any of it works at all. <laughs> the inspiration phase is what helps you put the initial idea down on paper, but it is actually the legwork and accountability that sees your painting through to the end. And while people may look at your finished product and say that you are incredibly creative or how talented you are, surely you've come to realize that like 70% of your time spent creating art isn't even about creativity or talent, it's about putting in hours of skilled labor. And that can get boring and repetitive, but that is what accountability is. It is showing up for the boring, repetitive bits with just as much mental and emotional presence as you show up for the fun, creative bits. And nothing will ever teach you accountability quite like a large, multi-part project that demands a consistent theme and story. Like I said, the Zodiac project has taken me about four years so far, and while my skill has obviously evolved significantly, the real challenge has always been to have a consistent theme so that all 24 paintings fit in with each other. Tell you what though, staying accountable to a massive project also helps you build some serious willpower. There are a million art styles out there, so much inspiration that makes you want to create in a whole bunch of different ways. Not to mention the ever-changing moods and situations that we feel like putting down on paper. Now, have I solely painted Zodiac paintings this whole time? Of course not. I've done so much other stuff. We've had style studies, we've had personal art, and stuff that was inspired by the technique of other artists. However, I've always, always come back to this series, specifically because I told myself early on that seeing this project through to the end is a non-negotiable. I don't care how long it ends up taking. In fact, this project is one of the longest relationships I've ever had in my life. <laughs> but we're gonna make sure we finish it. 
But an unexpected result of this project has been that I found myself wanting to also make sure I finish art outside of this series. And a second, even more unexpected consequence is that I've started seeing things through in my life outside of work in general. Instead of ignoring emails they get responded to, instead of quitting a workout routine halfway because it's too repetitive, I push through to the end. I mean, just this week, I actually wiped down the stained mirror in my room. It's incredible. So doing a big art project isn't just incredible for your art, it will also teach you a great life skill. Coming back to the idea of having to work with a consistent theme, one of my favorite lessons from doing a large project has to be the idea of restraint. When we paint for our own self-expression, we often want to do it to feel free and boundless and creative and all that good stuff. But when it comes to professional work, it is quite the opposite. Now you have a brief, you have style guides and you have supervision, be it an art director or a commissioned client. This was one of those challenges that I faced when I started doing commissions that I didn't even realize was a challenge or why I was feeling it. By all means, having drawn loads of character art, just drawing some more of it should not have been hard. But the skill I was missing at the time was the ability to paint in constrained conditions. There's a reason they say adding limitations help you be a better artist, and although that may be true about your art skill by itself, it is also extremely important as a career skill. Doing a large personal project with a consistent style is essentially you simulating a large professional project. It's like pretending to work for like Riot Games, like they've put you on a massive project that needs you to work under a very specific style guide where everything has to be consistent. I really feel like this is a severely underrated skill that no one tells you to work on. Like, yes, it is important to work on finding your style, but how easily are you able to put aside the evolution of your unique art style and focus instead on consistency across several paintings? I don't think it's outrageous to say that most personal art comes from the ego. It is stuff we identify with, art that we express our thoughts and emotions through. But with professional art, it can be a massive challenge to put that ego aside, step away from the internal monologue that goes into all of our other art, and focus instead on what our clients want from us. And working on a big project feels like learning the skill in sort of like a sandbox hybrid way. You're sort of still working on a personal project, but you're also introducing limitations and style guides. It is excellent exercise and really helps solidify the difference between inconsistent and consistent painting. Okay, so on the other end of the spectrum, let's talk about what a big project would teach you about style if you're still in the process of finding it. As cliche as this is going to sound, style is really only something that you discover from painting a lot. It takes several hours of dedicated effort to find a style that is truly uniquely yours, but the issue with a lot of us is that when we paint several one-off pieces in a row, it is usually way too many variables. Not only are you working on different stories, different characters and different moods, you're also varying color palettes and proportions and composition. However, with a bigger multi-part project, you can control some of these variables and let the others tell you about your style. So say your project is about one single character and showing them in different situations, kind of like creating lots of art about your OC in different settings. In this project, you're controlling design and shape language, and to some extent the color palette to keep the character consistent, but it allows you to play with composition and mood and storytelling. Alternatively, maybe your project is about different characters within the same universe, now you have a consistent composition and background and such, but you get to explore your tendencies towards character design and colors and lighting. 
And when you do a bunch of projects like this, controlling some variables and exploring others, you start to find patterns. You'll start to learn what your tendencies are and also exactly where your own preferred aesthetic lies. Boom, you have a style. The thing I love about big projects is that you get to play with so many different learning goals. Like you've definitely seen me do this with videos as well. The entire style study series, for instance, is a massive project and funnily enough, kicked off the Zodiac project too. The reason I started it was to learn through studying people who make contemporary art, but also to explore ways of creating marks on canvas that I wouldn't have thought to create before. And as a result, my art has improved significantly and I've definitely found ways of painting that I absolutely love. Style isn't just something that happens from painting randomly, it takes a lot of planned, structured practice that allows for gradual exploration. And nothing fits the bill for this quite like an ambitious project. Okay, so this last one is 100% geared towards your art career, but one incredible outcome when it comes to working on big projects is that it looks amazing on your art portfolio. I'm not talking about visually, which I'm sure it does, but rather as a potential candidate for a job. When you're looking for long-term work, it will likely involve doing a lot of projects that require consistency of style and design. And if a hiring manager is looking at a bunch of portfolios, one of the first things they'll be impressed by is your ability to hold a consistent theme across a project without losing on visual quality or creative expression. You'd be showing them that you're able to create appeal and be innovative while staying within the limits of a design brief. Then there are other attributes it shows off about you as an artist. It shows that you can commit and stay consistent for the long haul. When you spend several months or years growing and evolving a project, it signifies not just the ability, but the desire to really bring a story to life. It shows that you are willing to put in however long it takes and however much work it takes in order to flesh out entire worlds. But the third, and in my opinion, the most important attribute it shows is that you are self-driven and can take charge of a project without needing supervision. With every job listing I've ever seen, that is the key word that pops up most often, is self-motivated. Employers want employees that don't need helicopter parenting or managers constantly having to follow up for updates on assignments. And sure, while a portfolio full of previous professional work talks about lots of industry experience, there is a reason why portfolio guidelines also insist on seeing a candidate's personal work. It is to gauge just how well an artist is able to invest in a project without any supervision whatsoever. And what better way to display self-motivation than through a beautiful, creative, and technically proficient project that you made for no reason other than because you simply felt driven to? Which now brings us on to this painting. Since this was the final stage, this week wasn't necessarily about making big dramatic changes to this painting, but rather all about refinement. I'm pretty sure I spent like 80% of my painting time this week working on clouds, but it was actually incredibly therapeutic. The essence of Aquarius is very otherworldly. It is that disruptive, rebellious energy that forces the world to go through massive amounts of upheaval. We're actually stepping into the age of Aquarius right now, and I'd argue this is some of the most disruptive energy we've ever seen in the world, in that more and more people are waking up to all the injustice and pain, but also all the beauty and love that we have on this plane of existence. Aquarius is symbolic of this feeling of enlightenment, and so I wanted him to look like a channel that translates divine wisdom into the earthly realm. This is Aquarius the Portal. At the 
end of the day, a massive multi-part ambitious project will do way more for you than doing one-off paintings, at least in terms of all the meta skills and habits that will really do wonders for your career. So what massive projects are you working on? Or having watched this video, are you now inspired to get started on a big project of your own? Comment below and let me know. Of course, if you enjoyed this video and learned something today, please remember to give it a big thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to my channel because I would really love to have you along for this ride. I do have social media. I have Instagram, Discord and Cara now. So links to all of those are down in the description below. If you like what I do and want to grab more of everything, I have a ton of exclusive content up on my Patreon, including all of my speed paints from start to finish, my custom brush kit, as well as prints of all my work. It is all on my Patreon. I'll leave a link up here and in the description below. Your support on there allows me to keep making all this amazing content for free. So I'll leave a link there. Thank you so much for checking it out. Alrighty, you guys, that's about everything for this video. So thank you so, so much for hanging out with me. I really hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. If you're looking for more art career advice, especially when it comes to doing art commissions, you will definitely enjoy last week's video where I talked about the five tough lessons that I've learned from several years of doing art commissions. I'll leave it out here in the outro. Make sure you check it out and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.